morning. Happy Friday. Today is Friday. You excited? I am. Of course, how do I look? Do I look all right? I look fantastic. I look fantastic. You look fantastic. I can see you people out there. You look good. You look really, really, you look marvelous. Marvelous. How's that for high class talk, huh? Hey, I want to talk to you today about how to pray for your finances and get results. How many of you know that it, it, if you don't get results when you pray, you're wasting your time? I don't want you to waste your time when you pray. You know, uh, Mary and I were just talking before we, uh, before we started this broadcast. And uh, uh, the truth of the matter is, uh, there are two needs. <clears throat> There's two needs in every church, aside from salvation. We, we assume that in the, uh, the born-again churches, the Spirit-filled churches and the born-again churches and most of the Baptist churches, that the people in those churches are born again. That they're saved. We call them saved. They're saved. Now, after people are saved, which of course is the most important thing, <clears throat> there are two, two needs. One is healing. The other one is financial. Two needs in the church. I guarantee you, I can go into any church in this country and, and, and say, Everybody who needs some kind of healing in your body, raise your hand. Three-fourths of that church will raise their hand. Everybody who needs an increase in your finances to pay your bills and to live your life, raise your hand. I guarantee you another two-thirds to three-fourths of them will raise their hands. Those are needs in the church. Yet very few churches are, t are, are, are talking about either one of those things. I talk about those things all the time. And the reason I do is because that's where the needs are. That's what I talk about that with my partners all the time. I talk about that in my church all the time. I guarantee you that this Sunday's message, and I'm not sure what it is yet going to be in church. I'll figure that out. But whatever it is, it's going to have something to do with healing or needs or financial needs. That's going to be a part of that message. And the reason for it is because that's where the needs are. That's what people need. And I look at it this way. If I'm not increasing your faith for what you want or need, I'm wasting your time. I don't want you to waste your time when you watch these videos. You watch all these TV shows of these people. How many of them are talking about healing or finances? You should hear that every time you turn on the TV. Every time you watch some preacher, he should be talking about healing or financial needs. How, and, and not just talking about it, but how to get healing, how to get your finances increased. That's why I'm the how-to preacher. They call me the how-to preacher because I teach people how to receive what God has for you. Now, a lot of people will teach you what God has for you, but I teach you how to get it. And today, I'm going to talk to you about how to pray for your finances and get results. Get results. Can If, if you have a bill coming up, say you have a car payment coming up, do you know how to pray for that car payment and get the money for it? Brother Hagin used to do that. Years ago, he actually, when he was teaching faith for the first 25 years, bless his heart, he lived month to month. They ate macaroni and cheese and hot dogs. I mean, we were around these, these, these people, the Hagans. They, they talked about how they lived. But 1975, he broke through. 1976, they were all driving Cadillacs. I mean, we heard the story. We heard Pastor Hagen talk about it. We heard the grandkids talk about it. They all grew up in this. So we, we, know, we know how they, but, 
but he would he had to pray every month for the money to pay his bills and you know what he got it every single month we did too mary will tell you didn't we honey we lived month to month and every month right down to the last day we were believing god for the rent and we got it every time didn't we yeah we always did we always got and we were believe me this one place we were living when we first came to Florida, we were so in over our heads. The rent on that place was $750. And our roommate had moved out. And we were stuck with 750 bucks, And we didn't have any income. Try that on for size. So, we started cleaning houses, as well as our little church that was starting. But our church wasn't supporting us. We have never taken a wage from our church. Even to this day, we don't take a wage from our church. We have other sources of income. Glory to God. Isn't that wonderful? That our church, our church is doing so well and, and, and we don't even take a wage. We don't have to. Glory to God. They pay our housing and that's all they pay. Praise God. But we have other sources of income. That's wonderful. Most pastors can't do that, but we do. But we would believe God and we would pray right up until the last day of the month. And then we would get the money. Brother Hagen lived like that for 25 years. But then he broke through. But how to pray. And I'm going I'm to show you how this works. Jesus Jesus told us, you know, Jesus taught us every, he taught us everything we need to know. You know, I, somebody said one time, everything I need to know I learned in kindergarten. Well, I didn't learn everything I need to know in kindergarten, but I'll tell you what, Jesus taught us everything we need to know. Everything you need to know, Jesus taught us. And that, that includes how to keep your finances going, and how to stay healed. The, the two major needs in the church, Jesus taught us how to do it. He taught us how to do it. All you got to do is go look at the instructions. And there's four chapters in the Bible that have all those instructions in them. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those four chapters have all the instructions you will ever need to live your entire life. And it's all in red letters. So get yourself a King James Bible. Go through it. Look, read, only read the red letters. The words of Jesus that were written down. Now Jesus said probably a lot of other things that weren't written down because they said that, you know, he did so much and said so much that there wasn't room to write everything down. But just read what he said. You do that 10 times, you will know exactly how to read your, how to live your life. Everything you need to know is in Proverbs. I mean, that's two plus. Read the 31 chapters of Proverbs. Everything you need to know to live your life is in Proverbs. I mean, the Bible tells us how to do this, folks. It tells us how to do that. The Bible also says in Proverbs 10.22, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich, and he has no sorrow to it. Get a hold of the blessing. You get a hold of the blessing, and what's going to happen to you? You're going to become rich. Now, rich is not millions of dollars, not Bill Gates or Amazon rich, but rich is having more money than you need to pay your bills. If you have $10 left over at the end of the month, you're rich. That is a form of wealth. That's a good place to start. I try to get people to the point where they can pay their bills with something left over. Then we build from there. Amen? Now look what Jesus said about prayer. He said, what, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. You have to be able to pray and believe or expect that God is going to give you what you ask for. Now that's the only way to pray and get an answer. The only way. And it covers your finances too. When you pray for your finances, 
You must believe that God is going to do it. If you can't believe that God is going to do it, get some help. Get some help. Because if you try to pray and you're not absolutely 100% sure that God is going to do this, if you're just hoping he'll do this, he won't. God never answers prayer where people hope he does. He will never answer those prayers. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Faith is absolute. It's a law. It's a, it's a blind law. Justice is supposed to be blind. The lady with the, holding up the scale, the symbol of, of justice in our court system, has got a blindfold on her. Because justice is blind. Supposed to be. It's not really. But I'll tell you what. God's faith is blind. It is blind. I'm telling you what. It, it, it does not look at anything. It's blind. Faith is blind. Faith, without faith, you get nothing from God. So faith has to be involved. And faith is expecting. You must expect God to give you what you ask for or you're wasting your time asking for it. If you're not to that point, please get a hold of me I will combine my faith with yours. Then we'll get your prayers answered. That's how we do it. I combine my, I do this all day long with people. We have a wonderful prayer ministry here. And people call me, they talk to me on the phone, I pray with them, and they get it. It doesn't matter if they're sick, it doesn't matter if they're broke, we get them handled. We get people off their deathbeds, people out of intensive care units, People dying of cancer. I mean, none of that matters. It's all routine. It was routine for Jesus. It's routine for me. Healing should be routine. Getting people's finances straightened out and getting their bills paid should be routine for the preacher. It's supposed to be routine. Amen. You get a preacher with some faith. If, if Jesus was the pastor of our church, would anybody be broke? Would anybody be sick? I don't think so. Preachers are supposed to do exactly the same thing. You must believe that you receive. If you can't do that, find somebody who will. Hook up with somebody because faith is transferable. You can use my faith to get your prayers for finances answered. It's another way to do it. If your faith isn't where it needs to be, get a hold of me. I'll let you use my faith. People call me all the time and say, Pastor Jim, I need to use your faith. It's okay, let's go. Let's go. I like doing that. Glory to God, huh? I like doing that. Go to my website, increasenow.com. Give me a call. Tell everybody you know who is sick and broke to call me, please. When you make offerings and donations and tithes to this ministry, call me at the same time. I want to speak a blessing over you. Glory to God. And I mean to tell you, if you need help with your finances, please get a hold of me. I will pray with you, combine my faith with yours in the prayer of agreement, and we will get your finances increased and we'll get your bills paid for you. Make it a great day today. Make it a great weekend. And remember this. God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills.